back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be making another quilt. This one is going to be another collage style quilt. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you will have seen that recently I posted a video of making a Packers t-shirt quilt. And that I made, it was collage style. It spanned an entire year because of things coming up. But I'm very much hoping that this collage quilt will not take that long. Hopefully. This quilt I have been accumulating things for for a very long time and I'm pretty sure I finally have enough material, shirts, designs that I can make another full quilt out of them. And that is going to be another Disney collage style quilt. I have made one of these in the past. I will put the picture on the screen here so you can see it. I made this one as my very first collage quilt ever. And I wanted to gift it to a specific friend in particular, Amanda. And so after I had finished it and I took the pictures and everything, I gave it to her. Was it was it your birthday? Was it Christmas? I don't remember exactly what it was, Amanda, if you're watching. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact occasion that I gave it to you. When I made that quilt, I had a fair amount of Disney things left over. Disney fabrics, shirts, scraps, patterns left over, and I've also just been accumulating more as I go to thrift stores and find them, and now I think I finally have enough to make another quilt. So this video, it's not gonna be the exact same as my Packers t-shirt quilt video where I kind of like explained what I was doing every step. This is gonna be more of a, like a time lapse -y video, but with extra things added on. Because after I finish the top of this quilt and to get the quilt done, I plan on using what patterns I have left over to use for stuffed animals so that this Disney collage quilt and these Disney stuffed animals will all be available on my Etsy shop. I will put a link at the bottom of this screen so you can see exactly when they will be going live if you want to get yourself one of these. And also if you wanna just go check them out and see about supporting me and my small business stuff that I have going on. So let's go ahead and jump into grabbing all of the fabric because it's gonna, I, I think I have to dig a bit to find everything that I have. So yeah, I, I would I would say I have a few things to go with. If you want to know the uh, magic of filming and editing, I'm currently filming this video. You've probably already seen the Packers quilt video from however long ago I posted that. Real time. There's the Packers quilt right there. Not even finished. I literally this morning filmed laying out the pieces for the back right there and realized I didn't have enough backing. So. I am currently waiting to go get more fabric for the back of that quilt before I can finish it. So, as you're watching this, you know how the quilt turned out before I do. Just let that kind of stew in your brain for a second. All right, I've organized this into three categories. These are all of my fully uncut shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies. These are ones I already had that I had cut from the previous quilt that ended up not making it into that quilt. And then these are all repeating patterned fabrics. So like all of these are on my bolts that were already cut. These are two whole shirts, but they are just repeating patterns. So cool, I'll sit on all of the clothes for a second while I talk to you. So what I wanna do now is looking at all of the fabric that I have, I have a lot of Mickey and Minnie Mouse. I have a lot of Ariel and I have a lot of Anna and Elsa. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and separate everything by character, essentially, character or movie. From there, start grabbing what I want to include, what I don't want to include. I am prioritizing these cut shirts first because they're already cut, I want to use them if I can. And then I'm going to be going through and prioritizing of the uncut shirts, the ones that offer the most variety. And then from there, I'm going to go and start filling stuff in.
Okay, so I went ahead and I got all of the pieces of the shirts cut and interfaced and like finalized in what size I wanted them to be. And I cut the first, I guess like batch of shirts to kind of get an idea of how much space I had with all of them, like how much, how well they filled up if I was to do like a queen size 60 inch by 80 inch quilt. And this is what they look like all laid out. Okay, back up so we can show the whole thing there. There we go. So that's all of them. You can see in the corners right there, right there, right there, and right there. Those are my markers for the corners of the 60 inch by 80 inches are, and you can see there is a lot of empty space. So the good news is I do still have some shirts over here that I have not cut up. Like I have this uh, hoodie that I can use the front and back of. I have this Mickey Mouse. I have this Minnie Mouse. I have this Lucky. Like I have a lot. And like I have this Lightning McQueen that's over here. And yeah, that Lightning McQueen's the only one. Um, so I have more that I can cut up, which is good. And I have a lot of like patterned fabric I can use to fill up space. But I'm thinking what I'm gonna have to do is actually shrink this quilt and make it maybe a, instead of a 60 by 80, maybe a 50 by 70. Uh, and cut 10 inches off of each side. Because even cutting those shirts and adding what I have to them, like right here, this is a massive empty space that is not going to be easy to fill up. So I think it might be best if I shrink all of this to make it a slightly smaller quilt because otherwise I'm going to use all of that material that I have in an attempt to fill all of the gaps and I'm not gonna have any of that pattern material left over for stuffed animals, which I really want to have that material left over for stuffed animals. So I think I might do a little bit of measuring, shrink this down some and then see where I'm going from there. All right, I've shrunk it down more so you can see there, there, and there are my new corners. I kept that corner the same and it already all fits a lot better. There's significantly less empty space, which is nice. I do think I'm still gonna go ahead and cut up those other shirts that I have over there and get those sized and interfaced and cut to the exact size I need and then piece them in. And by then, hopefully I'll know how much of the patterned fabric I need to cut to fill in extra space and I should be ready to start sewing the top. All right, it's a little dark, but I went ahead, I cut more shirts that I had that I found and other ones that I you know, had stored and whatnot. And this is what we're looking like right now. Um, that square right there is a Mickey Mouse square. It is very dark. You can kind of see it there, but the, the light messes all that up. So that's what it's looking like right now. And I laid it all out and I have my graph paper right here. Let's focus, there we go. I have my graph paper right here that I used to actually measure all the pieces. So as I was putting them together, I knew that everything was fitting well because the first time I did it, like I accidentally had things crooked and just it wasn't fitting well. So this confirms that all the pieces fit together well. So now what I can do is I can take all of these blank spaces and take all of my patterned fabric that I have and start sizing what's left and figuring out what patterns I want where, and now I know exactly what sizes I need to cut for those. So that'll be the next step. But if I keep the quilt this size, if I don't add a border, which I am thinking about adding like a couple inch worth of border, then the final size of the quilt will be 50 inches wide by 74 inches long. So 48 inches, is four foot so it'll be just over four foot long by 74 what 60 inches is five foot so by like a little over six foot like long so decent sized quilt when all is said and done but i need to take a picture of this so i can get those pieces now i have all of the quilt all of the pieces cut, it is totally done. Here is a picture on the screen right now of what I took last night after I've got all the pieces finalized and laid out. 
So now I have this, I have sticky notes in between each of the layers. So I know like which section I'm doing. And that picture had the lines on there of like the different sections all laid out. So now I'm gonna just work on piecing this top together. The whole top is done, except for the border. I'm gonna pop on the screen again what the top will look like when it's all finished, the, that picture that I took, but I'm struggling to figure out what color I want to put as a border because I do want a border around this. I want it to be like at least three inches, maybe a four inch border. And I want it to be either one solid color or two like alternating colors. And I don't know what I want those colors to be yet. So, I have to figure that out, then I have to figure out what color I want the binding to be, and then I have to figure out what color I want the back of the quilt to be. So there's a lot of things I still have to figure out. I don't feel like I can work on that right now, because I need Dan's input on that. He's very good at color ideas. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna get started on figuring out what stuffed animals I want to make. All right, time for a little update on the quilt and the stuffed animals. So I don't remember where I had left off with the stuffed animals, but with the quilt, I know I had left off, I had the top finished and I was getting ready to figure out a border. I figured out a border. So I have that completely done and it's hanging out right here now. So I went ahead, I decided to do, talking with Dan, we wanted to give this a try. So we did a one inch black border all the way around and then a three inch red border all the way around. And my plan now is to do a black binding all the way around the quilt at the very end and the back of the quilt will be red. So that is the next step for the quilt. So I'm taking a break from that to work on the stuffed animals some more because Again, I don't remember how much of this I actually filmed and talked about. So I decided to go with all bats for making this these stuffed animals. So I'm doing four different bats and they're all a medium size pattern. So this is the pattern at 100%, so this would be considered small. This is the pattern at 200%, so this would be considered large. And I went ahead and printed off a third copy of the pattern at 150%. So that's what this is. So these are the pieces right here. So to give you an idea, this is what the back, the whole wingspan would be. So this would be like a medium size then. So I cut that all out and I got all four of the bats that I'm planning on making cut out as well. So I had my mom help me with figuring out what designs to use for them. So I have one where the pattern, the accent pattern is going to be this frozen themed one and the main fabric will be this blue like turquoise type blue. Then the second one is going to be this Mickey Mouse pattern. So we have all of these pieces and that is going to then be just black for the rest of the bat. The third pattern is this really cute Mickey Mouse like spider web and jack-o-lantern pattern. And I'm using this light gray as the rest of the bat. And the last one is this Winnie the Pooh pattern that I have. And the rest of the bat is going to be this orange, which will actually complement the Tigger that's on here really well. Let me see if I can find a piece of that to show you. Yeah. So this Tigger, so it'll complement that really well. So as you can see, I have all of the pieces cut out and the next thing I'm going to do is actually start sewing them together. All right, here is an update. I have all of the bodies and all of the heads finished. So this is what those all look like. I think they are all very cute. So we have the frozen themed bat. We have the Mickey Mouse pattern themed bat, the Winnie the Pooh themed bat, and the 
sort of spookier Halloween Mickey Mouse themed bat. They aren't finished right now. The heads are stuffed and like ready to be sewn on, but the bodies are still empty because I just went online and bought what's called poly pellets. And basically they're like weighted beads that you put inside of stuffed animals to give them some weight and certain things if you want to be heavier than others. In this case with the bats, because of the way that they sit, they once the head is on, they'll be very top heavy and they'll tend to fall. These maybe not so much because I have the interfacing on them so it kind of stiffens the wings a little bit so they won't be quite as floppy but still they're probably going to be a little top heavy and fall over and not have the best balance so I bought those poly pellets so I can fill them just a little bit maybe like a third of the way with the poly pellets so it'll give weight so it won't fall over very easily. This is something that the original instructions actually says and recommends to do and I've just never done it because I've never bought them before but if I have them, especially, I really like this bat pattern, so I plan on making a lot of these. So if I have the pellets, it's gonna just make it that much higher quality of a stuffed animal, and I want to offer higher quality stuff. So I just ordered those. I selected the free shipping option, so they won't be here until Tuesday. It's currently Thursday. So I'm gonna have to wait a little bit for that, but that's okay. So I can set these aside, and then maybe today when Dan gets home, I can go ahead and go to the store to get a sheet that I need for the back of the quilt. And if they don't have a sheet in stock, I can just get some fabric to sew on the back and that'll be fine. Um, but until then, I can be working on making the binding for this quilt, which is just black fabric. So I might work on getting the binding cut and sewn so that's all ready to go. I think that's gonna be the best use of my time right now. All right, Dan just helped me get everything laid out. I bought four yards of fabric to make sure I had enough for the back because I'm not making the same mistake I made with the Packers quilt. So everything is laid out and nice and flat. I have my pins and now it is time to pin this whole thing together. All right, the poly pellets finally came in. I bought a two pound bag because I didn't know like how much I would be using this or how quickly or long they would last. I took them out of this bag already and put them in these little containers that I had because I had been hanging on to these for a long time and I didn't know what to do with them. And now they are in here and this two pound bag fits in here perfectly. So the next step now is to take and the I'm gonna kind of eyeball it as far as just kind of filling up some of the bat bodies and seeing how it goes, seeing how like sturdy and full they feel and how like weighted. I think the pattern calls for them to be about halfway filled. I don't want to put that much of these beads in there because that is a lot of beads. I might end up having to do that just depending on how the weight distribution goes, but I'll let you know. But I'm very excited to start doing this. All right, so for all four of those, you was, you're leaning forward a bit. I'm gonna have to... <laughs> Looks like I'm being like aggressive, but... Okay, so for all four of these, they are filled at varying late levels just because I'm trying to figure this out. But I think I got it pretty well figured out. They have you know, weight to them now, enough to keep them up and then they're stuffed with just regular stuffing the rest of the way. I ended up using that much, which is almost half of these, one of these containers, meaning I used like almost a half a pound altogether on these. So there's a pretty good chance that I'm not going to be making bats like a ton, a ton. Although if they're selling, because I mean the bat, I'll be, I really, really like making the bat plushes. So if they start selling better, I'll be able to then use that money to go toward getting more poly pellets so I can continue doing this. Now what I'm going to do is just keep watching some uh, Criminal Minds, which I don't know if you can see on the screen. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the screen or not. It currently has Jojo Siwa's The J Team on there, but I'm watching on Paramount Plus and it's just an advertisement because I am watching Criminal Minds right there. I'm just gonna work on hand sewing all of these heads to all of these bodies and I will show you what they look like when they're finished. And here they all are, totally 100% finished. I love them all. Look how cute!
Also, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I have the quilt totally layered and pinned. So all I have to do now with that is go through and sew it all together. And that is the Disney quilt and the stuffed animals completely done. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. All of the bats and the quilt will be listed on my Etsy page by the time this video goes up, possibly before this video goes up. So if you aren't following my Etsy shop to see when new releases happen, make sure you run over there quick to see if any of them are still available. I am so happy with how all of these turned out. I definitely can still improve on my quilting and my stuffed animal making, but this is all a learning process and I am just I'm very happy overall with how they turned out and I know that they are going to go to fantastic homes and whoever does buy them is going to love them very, very much. So with all of that, I hope you guys have had a great day. Thank you for hanging out with me while I make all of these fun little projects and I will see you in the next video. Bye.